The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police drove his dog team toward the town of Chilcut, north of Dawson. It was mountainous country, and the trail was difficult because of a heavy snowfall. King, Preston's big lead dog, battled his way through the heavy snow beside his master as they broke the trail for the dog team. Suddenly, the big dog stopped, whined, and pointed his ear toward the right of the trail. A high mountain loomed into the clouds beside them, and the trail in that direction was dangerous. But Sergeant Preston knew that King had heard or sensed something. What's the matter, King? The big dog barked then started to the right through the deep snow. Sergeant Preston left his sled and dog team and started after King, who didn't pause until he reached the brink of a deep crevice. As the Mountie neared it, he heard a faint cry. I'm coming! I'm coming! Help! Get me out of here! Don't worry. We'll get you out. I'm coming down after you. I'll tie a rope to my sled and around my waist. But don't worry, King. I'm depending on you to pull us up. You've done this before, old fella. Now get those dogs moving when I call. I'm coming down. Thank the Lord you heard me. I've been down here all night. There. Why, Sam, I didn't know it was you down here. Sergeant Preston. It was King, that dog, I mean. King heard your call, are you hurt? Uh, my leg is broken. But I can't feel any pain. Oh, let's see. I know what happened. My leg is frozen. Sam, I have to get you back to your cabin as soon as possible. Here, let me tie this rope around you. I'll loop it under your belt. My dog team will pull us both up. I think maybe you found me too late, Sergeant. Don't worry, Sam. You'll be all right when I get you home. There. We're tied together. Now, put your arm over my shoulder. I'm pretty weak. Now, don't worry. I'll hang on to you. Hunting! Go on, boy! Hunting! Sam's cabin was built in the woods about three miles outside of the town of Chilcut. Sam lived alone and worked the claim near his small house by himself. He lay on his cot, the dim light of a lamp shining on his pale face. Sergeant Preston had done all he could for him. Uh, it's no use, Sergeant. I... I know I'm going to die. I'm afraid there isn't much hope, Sam. Those legs are frozen completely. I know you want the truth. I'm glad you told me, Preston. There are a few things I I want you to do for me. I'll be glad to do anything, Sam. I'm a rich man, Sergeant. My claim was a good one. Yes, I know that. You could have retired long ago. Uh, In that box on the lower shelf over there... You'll find two letters. Uh, Open the box, Sergeant. The letters are here. Uh, One is addressed to my wife. I didn't know you were married, Sam. I was once. Uh, Please mail it, Sergeant, after my death. Of course I will, Sam. She lives in Indiana. Yes, the address is on it. The other envelope is blank. Yes, it's here. Now, promise me something, Sergeant. I promise. I want your word. You won't tell anyone what I'm about to ask you to do. I won't, Sam. I, I want you to put that envelope under my head when I'm in my coffin and bury it with me. And don't. Anyone see you do it? And don't unseal it. Put this envelope under your head and bury it with you. But Sam, why? I, I can't tell you any more. 
Well, Sam, you're laughing. What's so funny? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> the last laugh. Sam, look this. Here, take it. <laughs> it's no use, Sergeant. It's no use. Yeah. You hear him, Sergeant? They know. They know I'm dying. No, Sam. Don't forget. Jake White and Slade Wilson, two friends of Sam's, helped Sergeant Preston bury him the following day. They stayed behind as the Mountie left for town after the last clods of earth had been thrown on the grave. I thought he'd never go. Now maybe you can tell me why we're doing all this. We didn't care nothing about Sam, and digging a grave in winter ain't any fun. I wanted what? an excuse to stay around here. Why? Sam took a lot of gold out of that claim of his. What if he did? Probably in the bank, and he sure didn't leave it to us. Yeah, it's the funny part of it. It isn't in the bank. How do you know? I was talking to Bill Fay, cashier, just the other day. He said he thought maybe Sam was going back to the States because he drew most all his money out of the bank. Well, he did, huh? You think the money's around here somewhere? Why, sure it is. Now, come on. We're going to go over that cabin with a fine-tooth comb. We'll tear it apart if we have to. We're finding Sam Raymond's gold if it's anywhere around here. In a small town in Indiana, Cora Wilkins put down the letter she had read for the fifth time. Cora was attractive, though middle age had creased her forehead a little, and there were faint streaks of gray in her hair. Her mouth, however, was hard. There was a scheming look about her eyes. She smiled slyly as she looked across at her husband, Jim, a man about 50, wrinkled and worried looking. Cora sneered as she watched him remove his shabby shoes. <coughs> Uh, it's no use. I can't find work. They want younger men. Yeah, same old story. Well, I'm sick of it. I'm sorry, Cora. I guess I'm not much good anymore. Losing my farm was such a shock, I guess it must have done something to me. I'm just not the same as before. I'll say you're not. And I can't stand it anymore. I'm getting out. You... I see. It's because I'm not rich anymore. All you ever wanted was my money. I suppose you think I'm going to deny it, huh? Well, I'm not. It's true, and I might as well tell you to your face. So now you're doing to me just what you did to your first husband, Sam Raymond. Leaving me flat now that my money's gone and most of it spent on you. Sam was just as much of an idiot as you are. Poor old fool was in love with me. He, he cried when I swore I'd never look at his stupid face again as long as I lived. <laughs> oh, Sam. How he must have hated you later. Well, if Sam hated me so much, why did he think of me just before he died? Died? Why, I, I thought he disappeared years ago. He did. Nobody knew where he went. But this letter came today from the Yukon Territory. That's where Sam went. And he discovered gold up there. He died, and he's leaving me a fortune. I, I can't believe it. After the way you treated him. Ah, the poor idiot. He left me the money because of what I said to him about never looking at his stupid face again as long as I live. I don't believe it. All right, listen. I'll read part of the letter to you. You will receive this letter after I'm dead. I discovered gold here in the Yukon, and I've saved over $200,000. Your last words to me were that you'd never look at my face again as long as you live. But I've determined to make you break that vow. I never loved any woman before I loved you, and I hated all women after you left me. You never loved anything but money, so I'm using money to bring you back to me. Under my head, when I'm buried, there will be a map showing where my fortune is. The map is in a plain envelope. How you'll get it is up to you. But I'd advise telling nobody as a woman is a helpless thing in the Yukon country. 
So you see, Cora, if you want to get that envelope, you will have to look at my stupid face again. <laughs> Hold up. Fool. Does he think that keeping a vow is as important to me as two hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> you mean you're going up there to the North Country? Certainly I am. I'll dig him up myself if I have to for money like that. But you haven't the money to go there. It would cost too much. The the railroad fare, the trip by dog team. And living up there isn't cheap. I have enough money. I've saved enough. And it's all in my name, and you can't touch it. You mean you had money all the time and never told me? You'd have wanted it to help pay the mortgage. But I might have saved the farm if you... Sure, and I'd be stuck there with you for the rest of my life. I still have some jewelry, too. I can sell that to get to the Yukon, and I can live on my money until I dig up sentimental Sam. You'll never see me again. (laughs) And I'll never have to look at your stupid face as long as I live. (laughs) Three months had passed. Three months of the worst hardship Cora Wilkins had ever known. Fierce blizzards had whipped her face raw. And the cruel cold blasts of the North Country had bitten deep into her bones. Only her greed had kept her going. She looked gaunt and haggard as she argued with Andre Lagarde in his trading post at Chilcut. But that is what I must charge, madame. I never heard of such prices. Eggs, a dollar apiece. Beans, bread, everything ten times as much as we pay in the States. But, madame, food, it it is hard to get in this country. It must come a long way. It's robbery, that's what it is. I've spent almost every penny I have getting up here. And I've almost lost my life a hundred times. This place, uh, uh, it is not for a white woman. Uh, how much are your shovels and pickaxes? Uh, you want them for now? Your husband is a miner. I haven't any husband. I want them for myself. But, madame, the ground, it is hard like ice. You cannot dig. Will you mind your own business? Uh, sorry, madame. Here is a good pickaxe. Well, Sergeant, oh, it is nice to see you. Oh, it's that fine dog, King. Oh, how are you, King? Oh. Get away from me, you beast! Oh, I oh, I expect you. No, madame, no, you must not. That dog will not hurt you. Get him away from me, the ugly beast! I'm sorry he frightened you, ma'am. I'm sure he wouldn't hurt you. I hate these northern dogs. Oh, it is a good thing you are a woman. King would have bite you for swing that pickaxe if you were a man. King's very gentle, unless I tell him not to be. Are you a Mountie? Oh, oh he is Sergeant President of Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, have you been around here long? Oh, yes, I have. Did you ever know my husband, Sam Raymond? Yes, I knew him about as well as anyone did. So you're Sam's wife. I'm his former wife. My name is Cora Wilkins now. Me, I know Sam, too. He trade in here. Do uh, either of you know where he's buried? I, I'd i like to visit his grave. Slade Wilson and Jake White. They bury Sam. They know. And I know where Sam is buried. Is it far from here? About three miles out of town. Could you take me there? Why, yes, I could. My dog team and sled are outside. You can ride on the sled. Oh, thank you. Let's go right away. Madame, you want these pickaxe and shovel? Pickaxe? Oh, why should I want a pickaxe and a shovel? (laughs) Uh, I was just pricing things, Sergeant. There's a big difference in the cost of living here and where I come from. Up front, King. Get on the sled, Mrs. Wilkins, and wrap the blankets around you. It's getting colder. It's dreadful cold. Getting up here was the worst experience I ever had. This is no place for a white woman alone. I'm not going to stay here very long. Oh, those dreadful dogs. They look like wolves. Are you ready? Yes. On King! On your head! Here's Sam's grave, Mrs. Wilkins. Oh, this is such a lonely place. Oh, poor Sam. Sam didn't leave a will. We've been trying to locate his relatives. 
His cabin's been empty since he died. He hasn't any relatives. Sam was raised in an orphanage. I see. We had a little trouble then. Well, Sam ran away. Of course, I finally divorced him and married again. I didn't know where he went, though. I... Did... Did he ever tell you about me? No, he didn't. First time I knew he'd been married was when he asked me to mail a letter to you after his death. That's why I came up here. I... I loved Sam, and... And I was sorry about the trouble we had. I wanted to see his grave. Was there... Was there anything else he asked you to do after he died? Yes, there was. But I gave him my word I wouldn't tell anyone. I never have. Well, I won't pry into Sam's secrets. Oh, it's getting so cold. Yes, we'd better go now. You think you'll go back to Indiana? Oh, not right away. I want to fix Sam's grave. It'll be a comfort to me. I'll be here a few days more. I, I got a room back in town. I'll take you back there now. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. You've been very kind. It was the following afternoon. Andre Lagarde, in his trading post, was telling the latest gossip to Slade Wilson and Jake White, who listened intently. Me, I tell you this because you know Sam Raymond. You help bury him. This woman, she is the worst woman I have ever seen. No wonder Sam was a bitter man. I never knew Sam was married. Ah, such a temper what she has. Yesterday, she almost killed Sergeant Preston's dog, King, with a pickaxe. What was she doing with a pickaxe? Ah, that is a funny thing. Yesterday, she come in to buy pickaxe and shovel. You mean she really took a pick and shovel out of here? Oui, she come in for it this morning. <laughs> Uh, maybe she will dig up poor Sam to scold him, no? <laughs> that sure is funny. Oh, wait, there is customer. I come back in just one minute. Hello, Andre. What can I do for you? What do you make of it, Slay? No nice. woman would come up here for nothing. She must know where that money is, and Sam had plenty. It sure ain't in the cabin. We combed the place. Wasn't a grain of gold dust anywhere in it. Why do you think she wanted to know where Sam was buried? Slade. Maybe that's it. It's in his grave. Are you crazy? We buried him, didn't we? There sure wasn't any gold there. Could have had a map in his clothes, a map that showed where it was located. But why would he do that? Maybe he wanted to show her that it ain't easy to get gold up here. Maybe he wanted to give her a taste of this cold and hardship. Yeah, that could be. Hey, look. Maybe that's Sam's wife now. Help, help me, somebody. I, I'm so cold. My hand. Well, sit down here, ma'am. Let's see your hand. What is wrong? Hand is froze. I'm so cold. I've walked miles. This hand. Oh, you froze it. And all this skin is off. You uh, been digging something? Oh, we must do something for your hand right away. Never mind my hand. I need help. Did you men ever know Sam Raymond? Know him? Ma'am, we were his best friends. We helped bury him. You, you did? Have you got a dog team? Sure. It's right outside. I, I want you to do a job for me. Come on. Where's that hand, madam? You should fix it right now. It is frozen. No, no, it can wait. Hurry, hurry, let's go now. But, madame, you will... I wish you'd mind your own business, you meddling old fool. Let's get out to the dog team. Hurry, before it's dark. Temperature's dropping. It's colder. Here's the grave. Here's where I started to dig. Yeah, this is where we buried Sam, all right. How long will it take you? Take quite a long time. Better go inside the cabin and wait. No. No, I'll stay right here and watch you. You're waiting inside the cabin. What? How dare you talk to me like that? I'm hiring you to do as I say. And I'm telling you to do as I say. Now, come on. I won't. Take your dirty hands off me. Give me a hand, Slade, and bring that rope. I got it. Come on, lady. Oh, what are you going to do? We're going to tie you up in the cabin till we find what you're looking for. No. No. Oh, please let me go. I... I'll give you half of it, I promise. Yeah, then there is something to find. See, Slade, I was right. Now, come on along, you. Oh. Open it, we'll carry you. Stop it. You're hurting me. Well, get going, then. Faster. Open the door, Slade. Sure. Now, in you go. And sit down in that chair. Oh, you dirty cow. Slade, tie her feet. I'll tie her hands behind her. Yeah. My mitten is gone. My hand, I'll freeze to death. Oh, you filthy thieves, you yellow cowards. I'll have you hang for this. Oh, no, you won't. Nobody will know we did it. I'll tell Sergeant Preston. You won't tell anybody. 
Because tomorrow someone will find your frozen skin. Lying on the grave where you froze while you were grieving for the husband that you couldn't live without. Uh, uh, that does it. You rat. I'll get back to town. Oh, I... no, you won't. By the time it's dark, you'll be frozen right in that chair. Then we'll untie you and put you on the grave. <laughs> yeah. Starting to snow now, and our tracks won't show. Help! Help me, somebody! Put a gag Help. in her mouth, Slade. Oh, sure. No, no! Help! Shut up! I'll give you all the clothes. Uh. I won't, Slade! About two hours after Cora had left Andre's trading post, Sergeant Preston came in for some supplies. Andre couldn't wait to tell him the latest gossip. Sergeant, that crazy woman, she come in twice today. You mean Sam's wife? We oui. First she buy pick and shovel. Then two hours ago, she run in here like wild woman. Her hand he is frostbitten, but she will not stop or fix it. She takes Jake White and Slade Wilson to go out and help her dig something. Jake White and Slade Wilson... You went out alone with them? We oui. They are gone two hours. And you say her hand was frozen? We. Oui. Me, I say for her to fix it. She gets so mad, she almost spit. She's liable to lose that hand. Better find out what this is all about. Do you know where they went? She say something about where Sam is buried. I can't understand it. <laughs> well, King, I guess we'd better get out there. I don't like her any more than you do, boy. But duty is duty. Sacre bleu. I am glad it is you and not me who must tell that woman Wildcat what to do. I'll see you later, Andre. Come along, King. It had begun to snow as Jake and Slade worked feverishly with pick and shovel. It was hard work as the ground over Sam's grave was frozen solidly. Gotta hurry, Slade. Be dark soon. I wish we hadn't buried him so deep. There it is. Oh. Get this loose dirt off. Yeah. Yeah, we can lift it out now, I think. Grab hold of that end. Yeah, I got it. Now, come on, lift. There it is. Yeah. What? Jake. Jake, look, a dog team. It's Preston. Okay, we can see this. Let me handle this. Don't you say anything. Hello. What are you doing? Oh, Sergeant, why, uh... Well, we're, we're just doing a favor for Sam's wife. She she asked us to dig him up. What for? I never heard of such a thing. Don't ask me. She hired us to do it. Where is she? Why, uh, we left her at her place in town. We thought it was too cold for her. She said she'd come out later. Did she take care of that frozen hand? Oh, sure. That's why we took her home. It was then that Sergeant Preston noticed his big dog, King. <laughs> King was pawing at something in the snow and then picked it up and brought it to the Monty. What's this, King? Oh, it's a mitten. A woman's mitten. A uh, uh, mitten? Why, well, Mrs. Wilkins must have dropped it. She must have been here. She wouldn't go around without a mitten in this weather. Suddenly, the sharp ears of King heard a noise coming from the cabin. It was faint, and no human ears could have heard it. The dog walked toward the cabin, then looked back at his master and barked. What's wrong, King? Uh, he just heard the wind blowing that door. Seems to want me to follow him. Come on, Jake. Better get back to town. Yeah. Just a minute. Don't be in such a hurry. Now you can stay here, Jake. Stop, Slade. King. After him, boy. Get him, King. You stay right here, Jake. Don't try to get away. Slade had almost reached his dog sled when suddenly the gray shape of the big dog hit him squarely between the shoulders. And he sprawled in the snow. Oh, get away. Help. Preston, take him away. Get away from me. Back, King. Let him up. Come back here, Slade. I will run away. Pull his dog off. Bring him back, King. You shouldn't have tried to get away. I won't anymore, but call him off. You and Jake walk ahead of me. We're going to see what's in that cabin. You may as well tell the truth. What are you doing out uh, here? It wasn't my Keep fault. Your mouth shut. Get in there, both of you. Go in, King, and watch them. That dirty cur. Mrs. Wilkins, huh? Stand still, you two, while I untie her. My dog's watching you, remember? One move and he'll attack. No, he won't move. There, gag's out the mouth. Now I'll untie her. She's alive and conscious. So glad you came. They, they planned to murder me. There, you're free. My hand. I can't move it. it. Your hand is frozen. We'll have to get you to town at once. Did they? 
Did they get Sam's coffin? They were just taking it out as I came. You can tell me about it on the way back. No, no I must get to it. Mrs. Wilkins, come back. You must fix that hand. Watch these men, King. Bring them along. Uh, we'll come. Mrs. Wilkins, what are you doing? I have to know. I won't leave until I get that map. You must open that coffin. I don't care about my hand. I'll open it for you. Here's a pick. I doubt we can do anything to that hand of yours anyway. What map are you talking about? There's a paper. It's under Sam's head. He told me about it in this letter. Why didn't you tell me about it? I was afraid to tell anybody. These men, are, I guess they suspect you. They're going to kill me. Call this dog off. We're not going anywhere. You men stand right there and don't move. Now I can get this lid off. There you are, Mrs. Wilkins. There's Sam. Oh. Sam. Sam. His face. It's changed. That's how he looked when he died. The cold has preserved him. The paper. It's under his head. Yeah. Here it is. Sam asked me to put it there. What is it? Just what we thought. So you two knew you'd find something. I can't open it with one hand. Sergeant, open it. Open it. Here. I don't know what this is all about. Here. Yeah, it looks like a map. Then give it to me. Oh, no. Oh, no, it can't be. What's the matter? Let me see. He said it would be a map. Showing where his fortune was. Showing where he put his gold. Oh. And I guess that's just what it is. If it hadn't have been for this dog, we'd have got it. It wouldn't have done you any more good than it's going to do, Cora. It's a map of Indiana. And beside this mark, he's written the name of an orphanage. I guess that's where Sam left his money. A cheat. A liar. It cost me all my money to come up here. And I'm going to lose my hand. My hand. So, Mrs. Wilkins, you didn't come up here just to see Sam's grave. You didn't love Sam at all. It was his money you wanted. He did it deliberately. Just to get even. He knew I hated him. But he knew you loved money. He knew that greed would drive you up here and you'd get what you deserved. Now I know why Sam laughed while he was dying. The last laugh, he said. Yes, King? It looks as if this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon is a copyrighted feature brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Be sure to join us tonight for Gangbusters. Here's a radio program that brings you true dramatic accounts of crime cases taken right from police blotters in towns and cities all over the country. The exciting dramas broadcast on Gangbusters mention actual facts, names, and places, bringing to life the criminal cases you read about in your daily newspapers. Week after week, if you've tuned into this program in the past, you've heard actual police cases of brutal killings and bank robberies, of flag-waving racketeers who lead our youth to vandalism. You've heard what factors lead to crime, and you've learned again that crime does not pay, even for the smartest type criminal. So, for thrills and suspense, minute after minute of powerful drama, don't miss Gangbusters tonight when it goes on the air.